Good evening, everybody. Okay, so hands up, who's doing Scrum? Hands up, who's really doing Scrum? I mean, deep down inside, you really think you're doing Scrum? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so Scrum... Um, right, so Scrum starts with the product backlog, and the product backlog is full of stories. So the stories are... The stories describe the work that he's doing, and they can come from any source. They can come from you, they can come from the stakeholders, they can come from anyone in the business. They look at the product backlog, and the product backlog, like I said, is, is the root of the Scrum process. Everything we do should ideally be based on the product backlog, with the exception of triage and bugs and that, that kind of stuff. So stories on the product backlog, if we're going to make head or tail of them and they're going to be something we really want to work with, um, they need to be as accurate and well-written as possible to make estimating and prioritising a bit easier. So, this is the kind of story I'm used to getting. Uh, I need a report, and it needs to contain some stuff. We get that quite a bit where I am. Um, and this one line request goes straight to the bottom of the product backlog, as we all know, and it's called an... Anyone? Begins with E. Ends in PIC. Epic. It's called an epic. And it goes to the bottom of the product backlog, and as it rises in importance, as it rises in priority, we start to break it down. Um, so it gets more better, de better, better defined, and we might split it up into other stories, and if that's not possible, like Ian was saying, then we might do the sprint zero or iteration planning. So, the best way to um, write a user story is to use the following acronym. INVEST. Who's heard of INVEST? Cool, okay. So, it should be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, which is a real word, I'm told, small and testable. So each story should be independent. It should ideally not depend on other stories. Um, if it does, then you need to break it up and be able to deliver small slices of your platform or whatever it is you're developing. Um, it makes estimation and prioritization much more difficult if there are dependencies because you might be estimating a story at 10 story points or three story points or whatever. And somebody says, but we need to do that first. And that's, that is five story points. So is your new story now five or eight story points or whatever? So you need to make sure they're independent. Negotiable. A story isn't an exact description of the work that needs doing. Um, the details can be negotiated later with the customer. It's just an idea. A story, look at a story as a catalyst for conversation. That's the best way to look at one. Um, you take the story off the whiteboard or print it out or whatever, whatever tool you're using and you take it to the person who's written and you say, Let, let's talk about this. Um, what is it you really want? It needs to be valuable. If it's not valuable, you shouldn't be doing it. It needs to be estimable. It's the wrong use of the word, but that's the only picture I could find. And developers need to be able to estimate the size. If, if, if you or I or any part of your team can't estimate the size, then, then it needs to go back to the drawing board. It needs to go, it needs to be split up perhaps, or you need to go and talk to the person who wrote the story originally, collaborate with them, uh, and make sure you understand what it is they're, they're asking. It needs to be small. It should ideally fit into a sprint. Now, whether your sprints are a week, two weeks, or a month, it's entirely up to you. But if it doesn't fit into a sprint, you're going to have nothing to review at the end of that sprint. And the review is important. It allows you to be proud of what you've done and to say, look, we've, we've delivered this story as you asked. Check it out. Let's have a big round of applause. Uh, finally, it should be testable. Um, it, and it should be testable in a way that you can say, uh, it's done. You know, I'm not talking about functional tests. I'm not talking about um, unit tests or siege tests or anything like that. I'm just talking about that the customer should say, yeah, that's, that's done. I can test that. So let's define the story. So. Um, the beginning of a user story starts as A, and it's the intended audience for the piece of work, and that is important for helping you decide on the context for the rest of the story. As a salesman, as a marketer, as a developer, as a CEO, gives you an idea of what the rest of the story will say and how you should handle that story and, and how you should progress with the collaboration. Um, and it might not always be the person who raises the story. I might be raising the story on behalf of somebody else, or so on and so forth. <coughs> The bulk of the story, the, the meat of any user story is the I need. And you need to write down what is actually needed. You need to be as descriptive as possible without going overboard, but both the development department and the business need to understand what's written on this card. Now this normally means it will be slightly dumber than it would need to be for a developer. Um, and you might be using more domain language than, than you would normally, if you see what I mean. Um, and a good description for a TPS report might be, um, as a middle management donk, I need a report showing various statistics from individual users. Um, so, the next part of the story, so that. This is where we confirm that our story provides a value. Like I said, if there's no value in the story, there's no point doing it. It's not gonna, there's no ROI, nobody's going to go, that was great, I really needed that. So you must confirm there's value. Um, if this is 
if, the, if it is so that I have a TPS report, then that's, that's not enough. You shouldn't be doing that story. Um, a better example would be um, so that I can recreate my testing procedure or so that I can document everything I've tested in, in, in the context of a TPS report. So the other part of a, a user story that often gets forgotten is acceptance, often gets forgotten rather, sorry, two beers, uh, is acceptance criteria. Who writes acceptance criteria on this story? Hands up. Who writes more than two acceptance criteria on this story? Pretty good. Okay, so this is how we know when a story is done. So if there is no acceptance criteria, you have no idea when the story is done. Um, and you need to. This this means that you're going to be susceptible to scope creep. And who here hasn't? Put your hand up if you've never been if you've never been the victim of scope creep. Nobody, exactly. Um, so you've got to be aware. Of, you've got to be aware of scope creep. Um, and and the acceptance criteria should be something that's testable. And it, it, there's a lot of conversation about how this is and how you put it on there. But it could be in the form of a bunch of questions. It could be, um, can I see my testing procedures? Can I put a, chi a, ch a pass or a fail next to um, each each test item? Or it might just be a bunch of statements um, which say the same thing. Um, is there a testing procedure? Is there a pass fail button? Um, but you can also reference other documents. So um, uh, it would also be acceptable to say a report looks like the mock up the designers gave me or the report data was displayed as defined in the business requirements. So, in conclusion, sorry, I'm nearly done. Uh, uh, writing user stories isn't difficult, it's really easy. And the most important thing to remember is you must collaborate. You don't take a story off the board, do the work, and then go to the business. You take a story off the board, do the work. No, you don't. So it's all of the board, go to the business, and then you do the work. Uh, Well-written stories make our jobs as developers much easier and much more effective. And good stories are the foundation of Scrum and its effectiveness. Sorry for going overboard. Thank you very much. No questions? There's the... Uh, thanks.